Through all their meetings, Armagh lead by 18 to Tyrone's 11. The first time they met was 103 years ago in 1890. That game was played in Lisburn. And on that day, Armagh won by 2 at the 1-2. Today, the venue has changed. It's the wonderful surroundings of Croke Park. And Armagh won the toss. Their captain, Kieran McGinney, elected to play into Hill 16. The supporters are getting ready. All eyes will soon be on Brian White, refereeing his third All-Ireland final. And he refereed the replay between these sides two years ago. Ulster comes to Croke Park. Armagh in their orange and white. Attempt to play the ball forward through. Tony McIntyre has come out the middle of the field. Kieran McGinney drives it in and immediately goes into the path of Oshie McConville. Philip Loughran shoots from the right. Armagh's first wide and there's a lot of changes already, Peter. Yes, that first change, Tony McIntyre lined out for the throw-in at midfield. Philip Loughran going to right half forward. Um, possibly Armagh are going to try to play uh, a long ball game, a high ball game. Ronan Clark has gone into full forward, as was suggested earlier on. I mean, it's, it's well known, uh, or at least some commentators would claim that they've thrown full back in a suspect under the high ball. They're going to try to expose that. Philip Jordan from the Moy. The Moy sitting precariously in the border between Armand and Tyrone has been a focal point all week for journalists and media. And it's also the club of Sean Cavanagh as Brian McGuigan plays it inside. We have a free for Tyrone, a foul on Duher by Andrew McCann. And this was one thing that was well documented before the game, that Brian White is very, very quick to spot a foul off the ball. Christmas comes early, and this has come in the form of a present for Tyrone, as Tyrone's top scorer, Peter Canavan, attempts to put his side into the lead. One minute and 25 seconds, Tyrone take the lead. Yes, and I know that, uh, that our man management team will be very, very disappointed with that. That was a, a very, very soft free. Andrew McCann had been impeding Brian Dewar as he attempted to make a run, um, and that really was a handy one. The, the marking at the back, Fancy Bellio and Owen Mulligan, and Andy Mallon staying on Andy McGinley, who is staying in the corner so far. Kevin Hughes spilled it out and let it go. Lachlan has played inside. That's to John McIntyre. McIntyre shoots, puts it over. Canavan from a free. John McIntyre with a seventh point in the championship brings them level. This was a good move, a confident move, good crisp passing, and then that trusty left foot uh, hooking it over. Certainly started off as the contest we were looking forward to, Jimmy. End to end. Armar more incident back to back at the moment. Aidan O'Rourke, an all-star last year. Easily cut out by Gavin Devlin from Arbo. Gavin Devlin, whose father comes from Mahare, and Cody Armagh just across the loch. Down goes Kavanagh. Three for Tyrone. Brian Duher. Owen Mulligan was hoping to be the target, but Francie Bellew is running along with him. And would you put that down, Peter, to the Armagh defence? The fact that nobody was free for that ball to be given to, although now Brian McGuigan has got away. Aidan O'Rourke moves in, Cameron comes back, showing no signs of this ankle injury. Certainly not that time either. Plays it out. Jared Cavlin drives it high. We watch the little crowd of Tyrone supporters behind the goals. There's nothing negative about this football. Three and a half minutes in, Tyrone two, Armagh one, and Jared Cavlin puts Tyrone into the lead for the second time. A really sweetly struck ball this from Jared Cavlin. He is one of the best strikers of the ball in the country. Uh, but that all came about because when the ball, when the free arrived from Canavan, nobody had picked up Canavan short, and it was easily returned to him. And then he was fit to make the play. Philip Jordan breaks it down. The scorer Cavlin picks it up again. Dungannon Clark's man, the first man from Dungannon ever appeared in an All Ireland senior final. Tyrone win a free. Cannon's in a hurry. Down goes Canavan. Brian White's having none of it. Little clash between himself and Paul McGrain. And was that Peter Cannon's number that they had a little tick against it? I don't think so. I don't think so. He just was. The, the original foul by Jeremy Morrison was being picked. And the McGinley. Off target. Level and wide. 
but Tyrone ahead on the scoreboard. And that was Tony McEntee putting serious pressure there on the end of McGinley's kick. Uh, obviously playing that sort of sweeper role from the middle of the field. But Tyrone are not playing anybody back in their own half. Tony McEntee gives it to McCann. McCann brought to the ground, turns around, well played by Andrew McCann. And uh, Captain Kieran McGinn, McGinney's first strike. Right down the field, it goes in towards Stephen McDonald. Armagh's All-Star last year and many people's idea for Player of the Year. Hashim McConville. Now it's into the full forward, Damon Marsden. Marsden's through, held as he shoots to the right and wide. It's not even wide, it's spun off his foot. So there's an opportunity, but also an indication that the true defence is porous if you run at it. Yes, Marsden's very strong, strong runner. Uh, got up, he wasn't that annoyed about uh, the fact that it, well, it, he was annoyed about the fact he didn't score, but he wasn't complaining to the referee about the lack of a free. Typical Tyrone football, short passing, Brian McGuigan runs into two Armagh players, one of them was Tony McIntyre, and both of them combined to make sure that McGuigan gets blown up, Armagh put it in immediately, flicked in, but the hand of Ronan Clark was on the back of the Tyrone defender, a free out. And both sides, Peter, are playing this at a frenetic pace. Sean Kavanagh, all on his own for once. And up now as he tries to go past Archie McConville, he slips. And it's really, really open, Jimmy. There are players free all over the place. Uh, so unlike our magic. There's Brian McGuigan getting the ball in 20, 20 metres of space. Um, but I think that's the second time Brian McGuigan has tried to run by Armagh players and it simply hasn't worked. Yes, the two number 11s collided and it was John McEntee, the occupational therapist, playing in his 31st championship match who came out on top. But Tyrone still keep possession, Jared Kavlin, with six minutes gone. It's Kavlin holding it up and faced by Ian O'Rourke, a nice delicate ball played in the middle. Campbell comes out, gets it on top of him, literally, is in the McNulty. Tony McEntee standing over Canavan. But the referee's going to call for a hot ball. But you have to hand it to the Armagh defence, Peter. Very, very quick to close Tyrone down when they get the chance. Yes, I, I agree with you, Jimmy. Out in the middle third of the field, it's fairly open, fairly loose. But when they, when Tyrone get inside 25, 30 metres, there are a lot of Armagh bodies in there. And they're very strong in the tackle. Paul McGrain won the ball. Now he wins a free. Gavin Devlin is not following John McEntee, who is playing back in that deep role as well so Gavin Devlin playing as a sweeper in front of the Tyrone full back line it's McEntee who shrugs off Mulligan Mulligan holding the jersey and took a little kick in there a little bit of petulance from the Cookstown Father Rocks player which is noted by referee Bran White from Wexford McEntee all the time in the world has it a little bit of delicate soccer skills that's an Armagh ball it come off Sean Kavanagh and John McEntee fell on this ground last year and hurt his head and he's done exactly the same when he collided with Sean Kavanagh but that was a very strange piece of play there from Kieran McGinney's pass wasn't great John McEntee was very slow into it uh, that's that little bit of curve Jimmy that joins the grass to the all weather uh, surface that's around the pitch um, and he's still getting treatment but it was a very casual piece of play from both players Well, while McIntyre gets attended to by Owen O'Neill, Oshie McConville will take this free from the sideline, drives it in, the only one is there is Ronan Clark, Clark can't get after it, kept it in and actually I thought he had flicked it off the Tyrone midfielder, but it's a wide ball for Armagh, it's their second wide. Kevin, Kevin Hughes was in there to contest the ball with uh, Ronan Clark, but I suppose we all have experienced this Jimmy a high ball into a full forward a nameless high ball into a full forward it, they hate that sort of thing it needs to be a fairly measured long high delivery and the two that have gone into Ronan Clark so far certainly have had none of those qualities John Devine Ergil Kieran Mann teammate of Peter Canavan Marsden is there but before him comes Connor Gormley Gormley gets away eventually finds his way to Kieran Gurley Another injury doubt who has recovered thanks to the wonderful work by the Tyrone backroom staff and physios, I'm sure, all over the countryside. Excellent work by McGinney. McGinney showing his strength. Back to help out is Stephen McDonald. Aidan O'Rourke. Lovely little ball in again to McDonald. McDonald immediately put under pressure, and that pressure means 
and it gets back to Jared Cadlin. It's a high ball. Man, McGuigan is there. So is Francie Bellew. Bellew, the two Cross McGlenn Rangers players combine. Tony McIntyre using his strength, trying to get past Hughes. Does. Jersey is pulled by Andy McGinley. Fed into Stephen McDonald. This is good work from Armagh. Philip Lachlan, the Claddy man, drives it long and hopeful. Armagh will not be pleased with the end result. But what they're doing out in the middle of the field is very effective. Yes, they, they can't afford to kick it in from too far back, Jimmy, because of so many men behind the ball. Uh, and they're, they're experiencing a wee bit of what Tyrone did to Kerry as well. If they're slow on the ball in the middle of the field, Tyrone are getting loads of body in there. A block. That time by Oshie McConville. Kian Gurley just brought it too close to the Armagh player. Tremendous level of intensity and commitment from both teams, Jimmy. Um, now, not all of it is, is as productive as they would like, uh, but it's certainly not lacking in effort at the minute. Tony McIntyre, who was a sub in last year's finally come on for Paddy McKeever. One of four changes from last year's. Paul Hurdy, Andy Mull, and Philip Lachlan being the other three. Nice ball by McGuigan. The Armagh player is down. That's Francie Bellew. And Bellew is going to be called over. Owen Mulligan. Not only is Owen Mulligan one of three for Tyrone, but it looks as if Bellew is going to pick up a yellow card. And this is not good news now for the Armagh full back line. Um, interesting to see that Kieran Gurley didn't take responsibility for playing that ball in, Jimmy, as Francie Bellew gets the yellow card. He, he laid it off to Brian McGuigan because Brian McGuigan is a master at threading the ball through to the leg of Owen Mulligan. Well, McGuigan was, has been doing that for Tyrone at minor and under 21 levels over the years. Peter Canavan, his second point. Peter Canavan, a magnificent record in Tyrone football. He scored the huge total of 43 goals and 537 points. That's with minor under 21 and senior sides. Brian McGuigan exchanging pleasantries with Kieran McGinney. Ball straight down the middle, goes to Canada. He doesn't get it at the first attempt, but gets it away. Picked up by Devlin. Now it's Kevin Hughes, the collision man. Drops it inside down to McGinley, who runs into John McIntyre. Down goes McGinley. And the wise thing was that Brian White immediately stopped the play. Players getting involved, but I think when we see that again, we'll see two players intent on a gaining possession and then colliding together. One of them, I think, is Tony McIntyre. I'm not too sure, but the Tyrone player is certainly Andy McGinley. As sometimes happens to me, when the two boys clash shoulder to shoulder, their heads ricocheted and you could nearly feel it. We're very far away, but you could almost feel it up here. Now that little bit of afters was because Philip Jordan knocked the ball out of Kieran McGinney's hand after the free had been given. And the wisest thing there was that raised hand of Peter Canavan saying, settle down boys. Joe Kernan, John McCluskey and Paul Grimley on the sideline as we see Stephen O'Neill warming up. I'm sure the Armagh men will be just wondering what to do if Tony McIntyre was to be taken out of this because he's certainly been very effective. Uh, not only all year, but in this match today. Yes, he's been. His role up till today has been to drop back and help out Kieran McGinney in the half back line, and even a little further back. Today he's playing as a, an orthodox midfielder, and then dropping back a bit, which is a bit easier to do. Um, but this will upset Armagh's plans. Now, I suppose there's been a lot of talk about the benches. Uh, the obvious replacement for Andy McGinley would be to bring in Stephen O'Neill, um, and. Suddenly, that, that, that would nearly improve the scoring aspect of the throne forward line. And the McGinley does an, an awful lot of unselfish running, an awful lot of work which benefits other players. Uh, but Stephen O'Neill is a finisher. And thankfully, both players are on their feet. Um, I suppose it's a testimony to the fitness of these players, Jimmy, um, that they can get up after a knock like that. Um, and this is a throw up now. Yes, between Paul McGrain and Sean Kavner, and this the 65th year or 65th championship game. Both these sides, clear exponents of the physical, psychological, and physiological 
demands that Gaelic football place on them today. Kieran McGinney looking for movement up front. No one seems to be moving. That's a poor effort by McGinney. Kick away now. Cablin drives it back to Mulligan. Mulligan slipped and allowed Fancy Bellew to come and collect it. Aidan O'Rourke gives it to McGinney again. The high standards that McGinney has set for himself will not be too pleased and he can add that one to it as well. Just looking up the field, Jimmy, he couldn't play it straight up and the same with the last one, there were two, four, five Tyrone players on their own 45 metre line covering that space. Philip Jordan has played in the last 12 championship games, plays that into Cavanaugh. Or Cavanaugh, I should say, Cavanaugh gets it into Mulligan. Quick presence of mind, Mulligan brought the ground, Cavanaugh gets it back again, he's upended. And of a free in, and that was a really silly free because Sean Cavanaugh wasn't going anywhere. Yes, and the funny, before that, I, I thought Kieran McGinney was tackling in such a way that Brian White would have given a free, he didn't give it, and then they, they really careered into Sean Cavanaugh there. Now, um, it doesn't, it hasn't done Sean Cavanaugh any harm, but it's presenting to room with these. This is their third, this is their third simple free. Now, we're not talking about 45 metre frees. Uh, these are free straight in front of the goals. So Peter Canvan, Ergil Kieran, player and captain of the side, pops it over again. It's his third point. It's Tyrone's fourth. And Tyrone lead by four points to one after almost 16 minutes of this first half. I suppose you could really trace that bout of play back to me to the ball, the two balls that Keir McGinney gave away from what was very good, safe possession in his hands. Mm. There's another ball that loses an arm out player. Aidan O'Rourke couldn't get it. Brian McGuigan's in a hurry. Chased by McGinney. McGuigan switches inside. Just like his father did back in 1984. Brian McGuigan stretches Tyrone's lead. It's his seventh score in this year's championship. He scored two the last day. And now the margin is four points from a Tyrone team who have recovered from an, or, an early arm assault and are now established themselves on the scoreboard. Yes, but this came from another unforced error. The kick out from Paul Herdy going straight to a Tyrone player. And then it was a worry before the game for Armagh what Brian McGuigan would do on Keir McGuigan. And his movement to the wings is going to trouble McGuigan. I'm just wondering, is the sun a factor in this? Because three times the ball has come sailing out of the sun and three times the Armagh players couldn't get it. You can't say that about Ashley McConville. McConville picked it up. David Marsden spins to the left and gets it. Kicks it high inside. Over the top it goes. Ronald Clark is there. So is Steve McDonald. McDonald gets it. There's got a little bit of space inside with the left foot. Stephen McDonald pops it over. Making sure that he scored in every game of the championship as Sean Kavanagh comes to the sideline and gets a little bit of advice from Mickey Hart and Paddy Talley. And that's, this was all Stephen McDonald's own work, Jimmy. The ball played in was a ball meant more maybe for Ronan Clark than McDonald, but he persevered, won the ball, and then finished very well. Uh, two points for Armagh. Interestingly enough, I suppose two of those points have both come from play. No fouls by the Tyrone defence, whereas at the other end, Armagh give away three scoreable frees. And a blocker, excellent ball, quickly played into the path of Ronald Clark. Clark is a man outside him. It's Aidan O'Rourke. Aidan O'Rourke has got Ashley McConville. He doesn't want him. Gives it away at the end of it. Caught in two minds. McConville on one side, Mars on the other. And now it's ended up in the hands of Kevin Hughes. So twice Armagh have got through, twice Tyrone have got away with it as Brian Duhart intends to make them pay. Trying to give pair, loses it, but wins it free. A little bit of word there between John McIntyre and Paul McGrain. Yes, Aidan O'Rourke will be thinking a point's a good score. Um, although, I suppose, in fairness to him, that it, it sort of opened up for him, Jimmy, and he, he was tempted to go on ahead, but that final ball, the final ball was terrible. Mulligan standing in front of Bellew. Now he's trying to get a little bit of space, and does, gets it inside of McGinley. McGinley turns but falls, tries to pick himself up again, plays it out, Brian McGuigan, straight through goes McGuigan, down he goes, Opportunity for Kavanaugh, who puts it wide. Unbelievably, he put his hand on his head. The young man from the Moy, who's had such a wonderful year for Tyrone. I'm sure he'll have nightmares about this 
on his own, just like Steve McDonald against Monaghan. And the result was the same. Yes, but credit here. You know, Brian White was letting a lot of advantage go here. That could have been a penalty. But look at where Paul Hurdy is. Out on him right away. It was Sean Cavanagh's, not his favourite foot. Um, good work by the Armada defence, or a let off for the Armada defence, maybe. Tyrone second wide as Tony McIntyre pours through the middle again. He needs help. Matthew McConville spins away. Matthew McConville, lovely transfer by the cross. McLean Pair off the post it goes. And look the point all the way. Back comes to her. The pace unrelenting. Both these sides are credit also football. And now it's Ram McManaman. McManaman from Dremore. In the heart of Tyrone. Gives it to Philip Jordan, the Moy player. Showing great athleticism, piles through, still Tyrone keep possession. Cavlin, he turned away disgusted. One, two, three. Armagh players surprised that Paul Hurdy let it drop. But I suppose if you're six foot four, you can wait on it coming down again. John right. McEntee, Paul McGrain, one of the first times that he's touched it. Ronan Clark, full forward last year, young player of the year as well. Out this time, the left half forward position. McIntyre spins it off the outside of the right foot. McDonald turns inside, looking for someone, gives it back to McIntyre again. Good work by Tyrone. Four men back, but still McIntyre gets it. Gives it inside, but the hand belonged to Jared Cavlin. Took it out of his opposite number's hand. That was Ashley McConville, but now it's Brian Duher. Unrelenting pace pillar. Yes, a, a real good defence there. Blanket defence by Tyrone. Uh, just John McIntyre couldn't get through. And that's the third attack in a row, Jimmy, where Armagh have had good possession and haven't used it. Now, granted, one of them came back off the post, but it still didn't count. Left foot kick by Kevin Hughes. Owen Mulligan's in pursuit. Fancy Belly with him. The ball goes over the line. Last person to touch it was Owen Mulligan. Fancy Belly's possession. Takes a quick ball, gives it to Philip Lockhart. Cross field ball. That time collected by Ender McNulty. Bally Bowden's an under player caught in a high challenge, was he? He certainly felt it. Big Joe's got off the bench. Mickey Hart hasn't sat down from the game started. A wonderful contest. It is indeed. There's 21 minutes gone. Like, and really, certainly the players haven't had a chance to draw breath there. That's where Andy McNulty got the, the knock to the head. Uh, although it doesn't look like it's going to affect his playing... High ball driven in by O'Rourke. The hand on the jersey belonged to a red and white. And for once, Tyrone lose the composure in their defence. Give away a free, and there's an opportunity for Armagh's master scorer, Oshie McConville. He might be lagging behind Stephen McDonald in the scoring stakes, but when it comes to free kicks in front of the goal, he's had very few equals in Armagh's footballing history. McConville's first score it's Armagh's third Tyrone lead by two and we're almost 23 minutes gone in this pulsating first half yes that was a long high ball in but the thing about it was it was dropping on top of the big Armagh men and obviously caused a bit of panic and I think it was Conor Gormley playing on Jermot Marsden who eventually ended up pulling the jersey don't forget our text number there's certainly a lot to talk about in this first half and we've still got 12 minutes left. Armagh, oh. interestingly enough, Jimmy, as that high ball goes into the throne defence, have switched Andy Malin on to Brian McGuigan um, in response to that. Uh, Keir McGuinney is now playing on Jared Cavlin. Kevin Hughes ensuring that Tyrone keep possession. Philip Jordan on his own. Armagh players want to close him down when they do the release. Sean Kavanagh, the late tackle. And the foul was by Philip Lochran. At least Philip Lawrence is the person making his way over to Brand White. So Philip Lawrence is going to pick up a yellow card. Yes, Brian White obviously not going to tolerate that, Jimmy. That's one way of stopping the, the running game that Tyrone employs so well. It's to take out the runner. Um, Brian White having none of it. Yes, Philip Lawrence then in his 14th championship game today. He played six of them last year, all his subs, but this year he certainly made the number eight jersey his own. Peter Canavan then. 
certainly a testament to the work that's been done, of him, done on him since he fell in the semi-final against Kerry. Comes in, kicks it with that style peculiar to Peter Cannon himself. Often imitated, never bettered, and Armagh are introducing a sub. Paddy McKeever is coming on. And we think it's a, a blood sub. Derwood Marsden walked off, Jimmy, with definitely with a knock to the head. As he walked down the tunnel, I could just, uh, from my uh, vantage point here, see that he was certainly holding the back of his head and also that there was being a compress applied to the back of his head. So Paddy McKeever's on. How long? We just have to wait and see. But Paddy McKeever will certainly be delighted to get this opportunity. Kane McGinley goes after Enda McGinley. Kane McGinley gets Enda McGinley. And the beginning, he loses out of the strength of the Armagh captain. Tony McEntee gives it back again. First touch for Paddy McKeever. That distinctive style of his, the ball is flicked out of his hand. He's not really worried about that. It's the sideline for Armagh. They've only one man inside on the edge of the square. That's Ronan Clark. Rand McManaman is there. So also is his marker, Kieran Gurley. There are five thrown defenders back in there now, Jimmy, with two, two Armagh forwards. And it still goes in high. We can see the push from here on Oshie McCar by Oshie McConville. Tyrone get on with the game. Rand McManaman gets it back again from Gavin Devlin. That's Jared Cavlin. Then Gavin Clark's man gives it into Sean Cavanagh. Sean Cavanagh, who played with Ronan Clark on the St. Patrick's Armagh team in the McCrory final of 2000. In fact, there are 16. Past pupils of St. Pat's Armagh in these two squads today. 11 and Armagh, 5 from Tyrone. And here's one of them in shot at the moment, Ronald Clark, who took his eye off the ball and lost out on it. And it's these little moments of indecision. Yes, the game has gone very defensive to me now. Both teams are, are, are not prepared to attack in any sort of numbers. Tyrone are getting a lot of men back. That was Brian McGuigan who dispossessed Paddy McKeever on the far side. And the same applies in the, in the Armagh half of the field a lot of bodies behind the ball and not many opponents that's a bad pass from Kevin Hughes excellent work by Oshie McConville the Armagh forwards attacking as ferociously as their defensive players that's McConville runs into Kevin Hughes fouled by Kevin Hughes Armagh have a man on his own that man is Philip Loughran he was the man who scored the winning point against Donegal at least it was until Oshie McConville struck his penalty over the bar. Stephen McDonald! What a score for McDonald! Who would want to be a defender? You think you've done everything right. You put him out in an impossible position. What does he do? Kicks it over his shoulder over the bar. Yes, he did unbelievably well, Jimmy, because there was two men coming to close him down. He obviously knew that. He knew that if he didn't get the ball away as quickly as possible, he was going to be tackled by two men and well tackled by two men. Uh, that, that's a magnificent score. Best score of the day. Kevin Hughes, grounded by Paul McGrain. Ball slapped out of his arms, but still Hughes had the strength and presence of mind as it eventually finds its way into Andy McGinley. McGinley spins, turns, goes past Andy Mullen, gives it in the wing, he gets it back again. This is wonderful close play from Tyrone, but it's the Armagh defence who come away. Stephen McDonald, the point scorer a moment ago. Now he's inside his own 45 metre line. McIntyre, Andrew McCann. There's certainly a lot of hits going in there. Kevin Hughes shouldered Andy McCann, and he was the one who felt the brunt of it. McIntyre loses it, but gets it back again. There's no one inside for him. He just had to hold it up as Ronan Clark gives it to McConville. Armagh used a bit of width. Stephen McDonald steadies, but that's one is going nowhere. But back to that bout of play at the other end, Jimmy. Brilliant play by a throw forwards, Andy McGinley in particularly. And suddenly, yes, this is it here. But what work by the Armagh players, getting back, uh, getting hands on the ball, not panicking, um, not giving away the free as they have done a few times earlier on. Quality from both the Packers and defenders. In O'Rourke files Brian Duhart, there's our text number on the screen now. 
07764 355 202 with almost five minutes to go in this first half. Goal chances at either end. The ball has come back off the post. And then we have the one constant, and that is the Tyrone captain Peter Canvin, who intended that ball for Brian McGuigan. But Fancy Bellew back, recovered from the yellow card. Aidan O'Rourke tries to get past Mulligan. The half back line now of Andrew McCann and O'Rourke combining yet again. There's a lovely professionalism about the way that Armagh just keep possession and eventually release somebody that someone was Kieran McGinney, crossfield ball. Clark was on his feet, decided to go for the shot. Steve McDonald was there, McMahon was there. McDonald got it. Was he held? He felt he was. But play goes on. Sean Kavanagh with a Tyrone player injured on the far side of the field. I think it's Conor Gormley. But the, the play continues with Conor McAnallen. Up from his full-back berth, he not feel out of place there. He played midfield for Tyrone for many years, but the strength of young Andy Mullen wins the day. The young Pierce Oak player, McGinney, was taken out of it by Megan Allen. Brian White wants to go word with him. Yes, I suppose if Brian White is going to be consistent here, Colin Megan Allen has to go into the book. Uh, Francie Bellew booked for persisting fouling. And now Colin McAnallen and Philip Rockman both going into the book eh, for late tackles, stopping the runner. Well, Armagh have a problem, Jimmy, but when they get this ball that they're winning brilliantly at the back, so good defending, good tackling, they have absolutely nobody up front. Eh, they can't play it long, eh, and it means then that it ends up in a attack like that last one. Ronan Clark, it was a bad decision by Ronan Clark. He should have gone for the score, but he went for a high lob into the middle. Paddy McKeever, crossfield ball to no one in particular and Kevin Hughes has come back because there was three Tyrone men Kevin Hughes, Ran McManaman and Kieran Gurley and it's Hughes who's going on to get this return being pursued by Paul McGrain, caught by Paul McGrain but still Kevin Hughes keeps possession good work by referee Brian White the collegial man gives it to the Tyrone captain Peter Canavan who goes through, I was going to say an impossible space Brian McGuigan holds the ball up excellently being tackled by zone number 11 and down he went now John McEntee felt that there was a certain amount of uh, how shall we say falling in that move but it's one Tyrone of three and Peter Canavan is holding his left ankle we can't see it at the moment because we're looking at Brian McGuigan going down well the hand certainly came in from McEntee yeah, well no look at I've been critical of the Armagh tackling and the fouls that they've been given away so far in the game Jimmy but the that was that free was bought by Brian McGuigan. Well, it was fair play and part of the modern game. Peter Canavan hasn't been running that well, Jimmy, for the last five or ten minutes. Um, now he's going to take this free, and I suppose so far he has scored four points from frees. He can take the pressure. He can score them, even if his ankle's not 100. percent There's a little incident in the net there between Owen Mulligan and uh, Paul Hurdy. Brian White is going to have a word with his uh, umpires in there, Tommy and Dennis Lonergan from the. Kilsheelan Club in Tipperary so Peter Calvin is going to put more pressure on this right ankle he's going through the pain barrier once again Calvin's fourth point one goal in 47 or split point one goal in 48 in this year's championship there it was again Owen Mulligan being escorted out of the nets. Brian McGuigan is coming off. And Stephen O'Neill is coming on. That was an interesting one, Peter. Yes, Brian McGuigan has done, I think he's done well in this first half. Uh, maybe this, let's go back to the rumours that were persisting during the week, Jimmy, that he wasn't 100%. Um, but he has, he has served them well, Jimmy. He scored a point from play and won a couple of frees um, as the game has restarted. S Stephen O'Neill then, who scored three points when he came on in the last match for Peter Canavan. Armagh are not getting the ball away. A uh, lovely pick-up by Paddy McKeever. Beautiful pick-up under pressure. And McCann, that's McKeever again. Kieran McGinney. Two Armagh target men. Aidan O'Rourke 
drives it along. Ronald Clark has to get it before the ball bounces. Hard to go over the end line. And Mickey Hart is going to give his defence a pat on the back for the way that they've closed down the Armagh fours in this first half. Yes, it's been a it's been a team thing with Jimmy. They have got they've got loads of people behind the ball. Uh, nobody afraid to work very very hard and not for the team. Um, they really it has been a good defensive um, display by the Tyrone defence. And just that just that one free given away. John Devine then lost his place after the Ulster final when the side conceded four goals and. Uh, He'll not be too pleased about that effort as Steve McDonald fires into the left foot. Now, will it go over? It won't. Armas fourth wide. John Devine looking out over a strangely static Croke Park at the moment. Players holding their breath and watching as McIntyre collects it his arm is being held Kieran McGinney looks to take it quick his side are down by three points Tony McIntyre delightful ball played on the path of Ronald Clark Clark needed space the jersey was held kicked it in with the left foot no way that Brand White could have seen that and the ball goes to the right of the post and wide and that's Armas fifth wide and contrast that with Tyrone's two Brian White's going to ask for that ball to be taken again because it didn't travel beyond the 20 metre line. He's also asking John Devine to wait until he blows the whistle to signal it. Um, Armagh won't be happy, Jimmy, with their, their return for the possession that they've had. Uh, Roland Clark that time, unlike Stephen McDonald for his really good point, he took nearly too long to get himself set up and then he turned onto his, his weaker left foot. Devine drives it out again, it's picked up by Aidan O'Rourke, O'Rourke plays it inside. The Tyrone defence back in numbers yet again, bravely picked up and held, and the free is won. Philip Jordan, Brian Duher in with Stephen McDonnell. Brian White putting a little tick at the number 13 on the RMA side of his notebook. Tyrone certainly in no rush at the moment. Stephen O'Neill's first touch, nice left-footed ball played delightfully in the path of Kavanagh, who's moved into the half-forward line. Ball is played into McGinley, McGinley draws the 20-metre line, left foot off the foot of Paul Hurdy. That's twice in this game, it's six foot four, that's him into play. He was going one way, but his leg went the other way, and it's the last action of the first half. Into McGinley becomes the fourth Tyrone player to score. As Tyrone, you're going off at half time. Double scores, thanks mainly to that man in shot, the Tyrone captain Peter Canavan. Eight points to Tyrone, four points to Armagh, and Armagh will look back at chances missed in the first half. The ball came off the post twice that meant going through. But as Tyrone, win the happier at half time, as I said, leading by eight points to Armagh's four. Now there's 35 minutes to answer the question, can Tyrone win their first All-Ireland? 14 teams have never won an All-Ireland, Tyrone are one of them at this point in time. It's 1989 and 90 since the team has retained their All-Ireland title, that was Cork. Things getting slightly hot and heavy out in the middle of the field, Sean Cabinet picked up an injury. And the players are all around him. And Brian White was very, very quick in their and also very quick to call someone from the sideline to have a look at the, the midfielder. Yes, he didn't give a free Jimmy. He stopped the play there because of a, what he suspected was a serious injury to Sean Kavanagh. Um, he's keeping players back. And I mean, I, I agree with most of the comments so far. Brian, Brian White has, has done well. Yes, I was speaking to him in the hotel this morning and he was looking forward to the game. And uh, certainly one of the most experienced whistlers as the Tyrone physio helps Sean Lally to Sean Cavanaugh to his feet and yet another player to, to suffer a head injury during this game Peter 
here it is again down he went straight into the ground actually it was on his shoulder and I don't know if he actually hurt his head at all but Sean Cabinet won't want to leave this field Yes, I, I think most of those injuries Jimmy are, are they're more a credit to the players it's because of their commitment their absolute commitment they're prepared to put their bodies on the line to win ball to keep possession uh, to stop the opposition um, and I mean it, it's just a, an indication of the level that Gaelic football has gone to yes they make them strong round the Moy Cavanaugh's on his feet Hughes flicks it away Tyrone are now playing into Hill 16 Armagh attacking the canal end Tony McIntyre remember it's Armagh her trailing by four points spins away and gives it to Paddy McKeever the left foot of McKeever John Devine had a signal wide early on Armagh's first wide and Paddy McKeever certainly has appeared to be a substitute for Damon Marsden and we're looking out in the field and we can't see Peter Canavan at the moment we just have to wait and check as Armagh get a, a sideline ball Tony McIntyre as captain Kieran McGinney has come back ball played over the top Archie McConville and McManaman McManaman is there McConville flicked it back tried to flick it off McManaman but it's another wide Brian McGuigan is back onto the field and we can't see Peter Canavan so there's a possibility that they've brought Brian McGuigan back on again Peter yes that, that seems to be the case Jimmy Peter Canavan I don't know whether he went back into the changing room for something or not to appear back uh, but Brian McGuigan is being sent half forward on McGuinney so Tyrone have lost their talisman and their captain can they keep the lead or can Armagh prove that they are the team of comebacks they did in last year's final they're trailing by four points at the moment Tony McIntyre it's all on the far side of the field John McIntyre drives it high Oshie McConnell's under it so was Rand McManaman punched away by McManaman a lot of players slipping at the start of this second half there's another example of it as down goes Kieran Gurley still gets the ball as Jersey was held Paddy McKeever was in a collision off the ball but again Armagh have sort of picked up to the left off in the first half Jimmy a bit slow and ponderous in their attack allowing their own defenders to get back and, and close them down making them play the ball square uh, and that effort from John McIntyre was more in hope than anything else certainly was a little breeze picking up speaking to one of the Dublin Miners just at the start of the second half and he was saying that the breeze favoured the team playing into the hill so if that's the case Tyrone are playing with the breeze as Kevin Hughes being tackled by Paul McGrain and now it's Philip Lohan who takes over excellent work by Paddy McKeever McKeever got it from Kavanagh Paddy Mallon who watched this game or watched the final last year from up in the hill Dan White judged Philip Lohan to have fired the ball the ball is played in the middle it's Stephen O'Neill gives it inside to Kavanagh Kavanagh shoots and puts it wide unbelievably now they give him his due Paul Hurdy was quickly off his line just as he was for Kavanagh but the result was the same he can't believe it we can't believe it and when Jared Cavan looks at it again, he won't believe it. Brilliant final pass by Stephen O'Neill to his hand. I suppose we'd give credit to him. We'd see it better here, actually. The keeper coming out. Well, it was a miss to me. Another Paul Hurdy then. In his 23rd game. As an Armagh senior county player. As we look down at young Andy Mullen. He's playing his eighth championship match. A real fairy tale for Andy Mullen. He played in the under-21 side, played in the McKenna Cup, was retained as part of the Armagh panel that started the year. And now, seven months later, he's appearing in his first All-Ireland final as Armagh attempt to retain their title. He's back up on his feet. Gets a little round of applause from the crowd. They're probably tired after doing that Mexican wave. Yes, Kieran McGinney there in the middle of the pitch uh, instructing Andy Mallon to come and pick up Brian McGuigan what a take by Paul McGrain Aidan O'Rourke kicks it through the middle angle ball 
O'Rourke was there, now it's Ronald Clark, he's got a man outside him, it's Paddy McKeever. The Ballyhagan player didn't get over the first attempt. That allowed the Tyrone players in, down goes McKeever. Connor Gormley from Cagmore had his hand up. Down went McKeever. And while we watch the Tyrone player being spoken to, a hand down to Mark on the sideline. Thanks, Jimmy. I'm actually in underneath Croke Park. What I have to tell you is that Peter Canavan has received treatment at halftime. I've just spoken with the Tyrone doctor. It is the recurrence of the ankle injury. He says that Peter can make a reappearance and we're likely to see him for the final 15 minutes of the second half if required. Back up to you, Jimmy. Thank you, Mark. Andy Mullen is about to be substituted. His place will be taken by number 21, Kieran Hughes. So one Pierce Oak player for another. And all this will hardly help Paddy McKeever as Kieran Hughes takes the place of Andy Mallon Paddy McKeever settled himself double scores at the moment 8 for Tyrone 4 for Armagh McKeever puts it between the post it's Armagh's first score since the 27th minute of the first half we're now in the 7th minute of the second half and the Armagh supporters all around the ground are off their feet and though changes have occurred uh, Andrew McCann is now marking Brian McGuigan. Kieran McGinley was very keen to get off him and get back marking Andrew McGinley. Um, once Andy Mallon went off, Andrew McCann was straight back on him. Good possession, one there by George Cavlin. Excellent work by Cavlin. Tyrone needed possession. Gavin Devlin, McManaman runs in, spins, holds it, gives it to do her, do her. Shoulder, fairly shouldered. McManaman is down. Kieran Hughes has got the ball. Kieran Hughes was fouled as he picked it up. And there's an example there of the the physicality of this RMA side you had McManaman who got a shoulder charge he went down Duhar got a shoulder charge and he went down as well yes and both of those were legal uh, Ryan McManaman was met fair and square in the shoulder and obviously the bigger stronger man obviously came out of it better Ryan McManaman still down Brian Duhar is up and ready to go there's Brian I think it was more that fall that left Brian Duhar with a problem there was the kick as the player attempted to pick up the ball that Brian White gave their free for. Ryan McManaman, born in Canada. One of the few players that never played underage football for Tyrone at minor and under 21 level. With a Tyrone player lying on the ground. It looks like Brian Duhar again. Sean Cavanagh in trying to explain what happened. Brian White asking everyone to get out of the road. Who does the stop start game help Peter? Well, our man need to get some momentum going here. This is that incident where Brian, Brian Duhur's run was blocked by Paul McGrain. So while all that is going on and Brian Duhur's being helped to his feet. We've been told that Peter Canavan is back on the sideline. This is definitely helping Tyrone, Jimmy. This is not allowing Armagh to get their hands on the ball and get moving again. Learn Tyrone to get possession, keep the ball. Miraculous recovery by Brian Duhar. Feeds it to the man on the overlap. That was Philip Jordan down when Jordan. Paddy McKeever is going to be spoken to. Looks like he's going to be the second Armagh player to receive a yellow card. Mulligan looking a little bit of room I think he's going to be told to bring the ball forward that's exactly what happened as we see in shot how they won the free in the first place yes and those 15 yards 15 metres that Brian White has brought the ball forward uh, could be critical to Owen Mulligan and Tyrone 10 minutes gone in the second half just one point Owen Mulligan taking over the kicking duties from Peter Canavan. What a wonderful response. And I doubt it would be to kick that over the bar if it had been on the 45 metre line. No doubt about it. That definitely was created by the 14 or 15 yards that Fancy Bellew gave up to the throne player. One goal and 18 points in this year's championship. The Cookstown player doing a few stretches. Paul Hurdy 
drives it along again. McGrain was there. Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh's down over. Gurley over the ball. Things are definitely hotting up in the middle of the field. And now the referee's going to give a hot ball because an Armagh player pushed the Tyrone player out of the road. Armagh at the moment are losing their discipline. There's another example of it inside the space of a couple of minutes. Here they win the free, but they're about to lose it. About to lose the ball, and that's why. If things are going nicely to Rune's way, Jimmy, there was an elbow there. And Tony McEntee reacted to that. Uh, Brian White, often the referee doesn't see the initial contact and reacts to the second one. Uh, to Armagh need possession. And they get it. Edna O'Rourke loses it, but gets it back again. Plays it back. And this is Tyrone putting on their full court press, as they would say, on basketball. Aidan O'Rourke, in fact, has slipped the leash. Armagh have got three men inside. O'Rourke gives it back to Paddy McKeever. Down goes McKeever. Dangerous tackle. Now, could this be more than a yellow card? This is Kevin Hughes from Collegial. He, ha he hasn't been booked up to this. But this is going to be very interesting to see what Brian White does. Well, that's the highest, most dangerous tackle we've had all day. Uh, I'd say it's still yellow. I'd say his, his heart missed a beat there after he had gone down. So the pressure is coming on both sides. It's also coming on the referee. And Brian White has told Brian Duher to make sure he steps back. Paddy McKeever looks at the target. Adam McKeever got Armagh's first score. He's about to get their second score. And you've got to hand it to Paddy McKeever. He's been sprung off the bench three or four times in this year's championship. And he's always rose to the challenge. Yes, he has matured as a player as well. He used to be a bit of a loose cannon, Jimmy. You weren't quite sure what they were going to get. But I must say, those two frees, uh, and that second one in particular, which was difficult. And it was him had been fouled. Not often a good idea to take the free yourself after the impact of a foul. Good kick out by Devine, Lovren's under it, breaks down into the path of Brian Duher. Duher being chased by Philip Lovren, excellent work by Duher. It was a little bounce that just got him away, plays it across inside, Kevin Hughes gets it. Down he goes with the shoulder, still plays it back to Hughes. Sensible ball by Kevin Hughes, right across the top. The Tyrone players combine, but McManaman loses out. Now he can Armagh go on the counter attack. O'Rourke, that's a poor ball to McIntyre. McIntyre's forced to chase after it. They didn't go to chest. Off the foot of Kieran Gurley. So the little element of surprise is lost. Sun has disappeared. There's a slight chill, but I'm sure the players out in the field on the field don't feel it. That's a poor ball given away. Van Der collects it. McGuigan back again in place of his captain. Mulligan along the side, he'll never get that. Especially with Francie Bellew pouring down next. That was another example, Peter, of the ball being given away as David Marsden comes back onto the field and he is going to take the place of Roman Clark. It really hasn't gone that well for Roman Clark today, Jimmy, in terms of gaining possession and using the ball that he's got. This will be an improvement for Armagh as they resort back to their two man full forward line. Long ball over the top, Kevin Hughes on his own, quick release and around McManaman. McManaman has come away from his cornerback position back at the half back line where he played for Tyrone for so long. Now it's Kieran Gurley from the Rock. They won a Hogan medal with Dungannon back in 1998. He was playing with Brian McGuigan then. Both of them are out on the field today, and this is the biggest day in Tyrone's football history since 1985. Or 1986 when they lost to Kerry, and 1995 when they lost to Dublin. Stephen O'Neill standing over this. Obviously, this will suit his left foot. Well, it suited the left foot of player, but Stephen O'Neill gets Tyrone's second wide, now equaling their total of the first half. So they've certainly been very mean in terms of putting the ball wide of the post. Paul Hurdy noticed that Philip Loughran had gone over for that ball, but so also did Brian McGuigan. Sean Kavanagh's gone down with Cramp. 
Brian McGuigan picks it up, holds possession, gives it back to Calvin. Calvin with the right foot is high. Purdy watches it as it drifts to the right and wide. Two Tyrrell players are down at the moment. Very yep. noticeable that Sean Calvin dropped to the ground there with Trump in the middle of all of that. I'm not sure what that was about, Jimmy, but it was great work by Brian McGuigan. He left his own man when he realised what Paul Hurley was going to do with the short kick out. A rare sight, Paul McGrain dropping the ball. Brian Duggar loses it now, and it's John McEntee. The full forward line was looking at quick, but instead it's given to Tony McEntee. Tony gets it at the second attempt. McManaman's pulling. Adam gives it back. Turns, kicks it over the shoulder. Game at Marsden. The man who led the fight back against Kelly in 2002 when Armagh collected their first All-Ireland back again on the field in the second half gets his first point and now there's just two between them brilliant tackle in the middle of the field there to dispossess Brian Duher who was trying to here it is tried to play the ball over the head blocked brilliantly blocked but funny enough I thought Armagh were very slow then in their build up Stephen McDonald had made a great run inside but wasn't found and Marsden did particularly well there despite the pressure of Gavin Devlin to get the ball over the bar Kevin Hughes scrabbling at the ball, collects it. Kieran Gurley spins away again, drives it down the field. Tyrone keeping possession. Down goes Stephen O'Neill, wins a free, and the McNulty alongside him. 40 metres out. It's a kick for a left for the kicker. Interestingly, Owen Mulligan is going across. Well, this is that uh, thing, Jimmy, about the fellow who has been fouled. Is he composed enough? And Stephen O'Neill decides that he's not but Stephen O'Neill has done well since he came in on Andy McNulty Andy McNulty probably had spent his whole time in the build-up Jimmy cycling himself up to Mark Peter Canavan Stephen O'Neill is a slightly different player and has been getting reasonably good possession Mulligan with the right foot right side left side doesn't make any difference to the man from Cookstown like Gavin Devlin a pupil under the inspiration of Peter Canavan Gets his second wide. Now there's three points between them. The sideline for Armagh remains unruffled. McGrain is under it and catches it. Damon Marsden has moved away from his man, but that's that high, hopeful ball again. Tyrone of men there. Sean Kavanagh. And that ball into the middle, Peter, just really suits a packed defence. Yes, well, again, back to the type of ball, Jimmy. That wasn't a great ball. That was kicked up and came off the outside of his boot. Um, it was to nobody. They need to be getting it in closer to the goal. And a bit more on top of the player. There's a different type of ball there. Andy McGinley straight into the chest of Stephen O'Neill. Brian McGuigan, playmaker, but blocked that time by Philip Loughran. Armagh winner free. Jared Kevlin in with a late tackle. Kieran McGinley off the left foot into Steve McDonald who's come away out onto the field here Cormac McDonald is with him now Kevin Hughes he left the both them standing beautiful move by McDonald kicks it high in the middle Marsden's under so is John Devine Marsden punched out Paddy McKeever can't get it he can now a lovely chip back to McKeever McKeever turns inside he's being held get it away but it was the throw Players tossing off the ball. That was Damon Morrison appears to be back in towards the goal there. And there's some passes this, Peter, which are not pretty. Yes, yeah, something must have happened there before that uh, free on Paddy McKeever. Because Philip Jordan ran straight back to Dermot Morrison. The two of them sort of jumped up at each other. Philip Jordan got caught in the face with either an elbow, a hand or a fist from Dermot Morrison. And it must have been something that had happened, Jimmy, before because it wasn't involved in the, the throw ball by Paddy McKeever it wasn't involved in that incident I think it was Mars that was run back in towards the goals again I think he was the player but Brian White is not too sure he's gone back in to check with his linesmen or his umpires and this is one of the great advantages that a, a referee has when he brings the same men with him all the time we might see it here Jimmy this is Paddy McKeever who's going to get Marsden's going to be talking. This is where the free occurred. Philip Jordan is not in shot here. Actually, we, we maybe won't see it. Philip Jordan left that passage of play and ran back towards Dermot Marsden. 
the two players sort of jumped at each other and Philip Jordan got caught in the face. Um, Red card for Marsden. Back on the field. Taken off in the first half with an injury. Sent off in the second half. Now, how will Armagh react to that? You can see how that's affecting the Tyrone supporters. But there's a big test for Armagh. Here it is again. There's Philip Jordan. Now, Philip Jordan was the man who started that incident. I don't know what it was about or why he ran towards Stuart Marsden. Well, from the little bit we saw, but it didn't appear as if Marsden had made an awful lot of contact. But that's really irrelevant because it's Armagh who are down to 14 players. Tyrone are on the move. And here's a man who was in shell a moment ago. That was Philip Jordan. Down he goes again. Mulligan inside. Transfer to Cavlin. Cavlin on a run. Kicks it high, but it's going to drop into the path of... And the easy hands of one Paul Hurdy. Over the top it goes to Kieran Hughes, Francie Bellew. Armagh trailing at the moment by three points. Players going down, and I must really say, players are falling to the ground here, and I'm very, very surprised. Brian Dewar's on the ground, and Joe Kiernan just takes a swig of water now Brian Dewar's being spoken to by Brian White and I think we can read that from here Peter and back in comes this is Brian Dewar's obviously Brian has stopped the quick free there uh, Tony McIntyre was having none of it Shane McGinney and Mulligan being spoken to Shane McGinney's getting the early card so in his 119th game for Armagh Shane McGinney Picks up a yellow card. But Armagh need to take a deep breath and just keep the composure. They've won a sideline free. They're three points behind. They're a man down. And they've got Oshie McCombell on the ball. McCombell being shepherded into the corner. Given out to McIntyre. Crossfield ball over his shoulder. And goes wide. And that really has been the story of Armagh's day, Jimmy, so far. Getting good enough possession, playing quite well at the back, apart from the freeze they've given away. But it's more their use of possession up front. The wides have kicked, the bad decisions they've made, uh, and they're proving costly for Joe Kearney. John Devine, quick free taken again. Armagh caught in the hop as Kieran Gurley goes down the far side in front of a pack. Cusick stands, Sean Kavanagh. The transfer, Gurley is over the line, winded, loses the ball, it's a sideline for Armagh. Armagh looking to take it quickly, and there's no reason why they can't because the player is off the field of play. Aidan O'Rourke, Armagh, or Tyrone have dropped, ran like Manlon back as a sweeper right in front of the full forward line. Barry O'Hagan, David Marsden's club mate, is warming up as inside us. Hughes, Hughes is being fired. The play is being held up because off the ball, Connor Gormley was seen to hold the arm off forward. And this has really been one thing that you can always say about Brian White. Very quick to notice the man being held off the ball as arm off. Bring on O'Hagan and take off John McIntyre, I think it is. Yeah, look, Brian White has had a good game, Jimmy, throughout in terms of Freezy has seen the way he's handled the game and his consistency, which players respect more than anything else over the bar from Oshie McConville Oshie McConville's second point 10 points to Rome 7 Armagh or 8 Armagh should say back to 2 points as Barry Hagen comes on for his 59th game in an Armagh jersey as Tyrone look to bring on Peter Canavan again and it also looks as if Holly Holmes from Armagh Hearts is going to come out. Stephen O'Neill. Tyrone keep possession through Gavin Devlin. Andy McGinley gives it into O'Neill. O'Neill's got a man on his outside if he needs him. Decides to go it alone. Puts it to the right. 
Does he? No. He puts it over the bar. Paul Hardy has signaled away. So that was certainly premature. Armour in a hurry. Paddy McKeever gives it to Kieran Hughes. Hughes trying to get away from his man. Gives it back to McKeever again. Philip Lohan is inside. McConnell's on his own. McConnell turns. Spins, gets away. Down he goes. Tried to give it to Lohan on the way past. Another wide for Armagh. It's their fourth of the second half. It's their ninth and all. And John Devine took it quick. But the referee has asked him to take it again. Peter Canavan is about to be introduced. Eight minutes to go. Three points between them. Canavan is attempting to come on. But Brian White, he's asking for the kick to be taken. Left to Kavanaugh who collects it. Stephen O'Neill scored a point a moment ago. Switz ball inside. Fancy Bellew gets it. Gives it to Kieran Hughes and to McNulty. Forced to go back on his tracks. Arma again. Barry O'Hagan's first touch. Gives it to Kieran McKinney. Fancy Bellew continues his run to the back. Brought down. Kieran McGinney looking up for some movement ahead. That's another pure ball. Barry O'Hagan did well to collect it. Driven in. Broken away. And collected at the second attempt by Conor Gormley. Fed back to Devine. Sean Cavanagh collecting inside of Steve McDonald and the cornerback getting slightly embroiled. Long ball inside. Fancy Bellew lets it go to Cavanagh. Oh, and Mulligan. Mulligan crossing the 20 metre line. Is one and one with 30. Off the post. Third time was not lucky. Down goes Mulligan with Clamp. Hurdy took the quick kick out. But Canavan is coming back on the field. He's going to come in for Peter Canavan, or for George Cavanagh. And if that was a psychological move, it certainly got the Toulon supporters back on their feet again. Yes, this is the lift that this Toulon team needs at this stage. And funny that, that was one of those insurance type scores there that Owen Mulligan had for the taking. They uh, had probably thought about goal first and then elected to take the point and caught between the two decisions, came back off the post. Uh, and the game is still is still there for Armagh to salvage. Um, there's I about 29 minutes on the clock to me. And a bit of injury time. Almost six minutes. Armand needed possession, but it was Sean Kavanagh got it. Sean Kavanagh into Canavan. Canavan loses out, but Kavanagh gets it back again. Brian Duher collected by the Armagh defence. And immediately, Brian McGuigan's in the top, but Brian White is there. I really have to hand it to Brian White. He's been right on top of everything well, I was going to say Jimmy I'm going to have, you have to hand it to Francie Bellew uh, at times in there he has single handedly uh, held the thrown forwards at bay has never given up and it would have been unfortunate if that slip of his had gifted Owen Mulligan a goal a couple of minutes ago McGinney drives it long Paddy McKeever gets it with five minutes to go now it's Stephen McDonald. McDonald turns, tries to get away with McMenamin. McMenamin does well to close him down. The Toronto fans bunch in again. Gavin Devlin gives it to Hughes, gets it back again. Feeds it to Stephen O'Neill. Stephen O'Neill crossing the 45 metre line. And the McGinley, all he needs to do is keep possession. There's six arm men behind him. Owen Mulligan is there, but so is Fancy Bellew and Paul Hurdy. Paul Hurdy gives it out down to McNulty. That last pass to Stephen McDonald's again, Jimmy, a, a poor decision at this stage. A point would be a very good score. John McIntyre inside with Kevin Hughes, who pulls at his jersey. 
And the longer he takes, the more our mat or from uh, Tyrone players flood back into that danger area. Steve McDonald's up there, but all it needs is a fist from a defender. The forwards try to create, the defenders try to spoil, and it's the defenders who are doing the best at the moment. As away come Tyrone again, this time it's the substitute. Lovely ball by Collie Holmes, the Armagh Harps player. Getting into a bit of a tussle with Philip Loughran. Not releasing the ball. Paul McGrain did well to snatch it out. Nice little dummy. But there's that high ball again. Hopeful more than anything else. Steve McDonald's there, breaks it down. Jane Hughes just couldn't get it. Brian Duher tries to find Mulligan and does. Mulligan faced by Andy McNulty. The crump is gone. Crossing the 45 metre line. Down he goes. Waits for a free. Doesn't get it. Andy McGinley from Errigal Kieran. Home club of Peter Canavan. Dropping short. Paul Hurdy. As Tyrone just can't put Arma away. Three points. Three minutes to go. And whatever Brand White decides will be added on for injury time. Remember this Arma with 14 players. Barry O'Hagan drives it in again. Steve McDonald waiting for the break. It's broken down. McIntyre gives it inside to McDonald. McDonald, the ball was blocked. A brilliant block, it must be said. McDonald staying down. Played across again. The Tyrone defence are there, but still I might have it. Picked up. It's a free. But it'll be interesting to see when we see that again. Who it was that got the block in. Brilliant piece of play by Tony McIntyre, who got the ball away to McDonald. He hesitated as if to make sure of the shot, to try to draw the keeper. Uh, but then the block came in. Steve McDonald still down. But you see, when I saw it first, I thought it was a foot block, and as a result, a penalty. But it wasn't a foot block, brilliantly. Block, just couldn't see possibly see Sean Kavanagh possibly Sean Kavanagh not too sure and now Ashi McConville looking forward and we're now going to be told how long is about to be played Paddy Russell's gone in side as Ashi McConville puts it over Ashi McConville's third point 11 to Tyrone 2 to Armagh or 9 to Armagh there's a two points difference at least three minutes of additional time so three minutes for Armagh to retain their title or three minutes for Tyrone to get their first present Mary Magalise looks on with her husband Martin and they're looking down at two Ulster teams playing in this historic final Tyrone get it, Sean Kavanagh has it just keeps possession and hits the ground loses it now it's Armagh, Kieran McGinney Gives it to Aidan O'Rourke, Aidan O'Rourke being tackled, held by Canavan, not being released by Canavan. Driven in again, McIntyre's under, broken away, Shane Hughes have gone one side, the ball went the other, Brian Duher, the vet who plays his football with Clan Gale. gives it to Conor Gormley from Tag Moore, Tyrone moving again, Ryan McMenamin, Mr Energy as far as Tyrone supporters are concerned, holding it up, Still gets it, back onto his feet again, he was tackled by McGinney. We're now in the three minutes that have been added on by Brand White, as Brand McGuigan loses it. Francie Bellew, Armagh's defender, is hauled down. Hauled and held. Brand White over and trying to remove Owen Mulligan from all of that, and he's going to talk to Owen Mulligan. Connor Gormley is coming off as Owen Mulligan gets a yellow card he's going to be replaced by Chris Lawn he was here the last time that Tyrone played in an All-Ireland final that day it was against Dublin they lost that day by 12 points to 11 today they're winning by 11 points to 9 Chris Lawn from Moortown in is on Aidan O'Rourke Crossing the halfway line, held up by McGuigan. Gets it in to Andrew McCann. Andrew McCann playing his football on Leaks it. Drives it in. Lawn kept his eye on it. 
So did Ran McManaman and now it's Cormac McAnallan. Chris Long gets his first touch. Tyrone quite content to run down the clock. Brian Duher. A long kick angled beautifully into the path of the substitute. Stephen O'Neill turns, kicks it over the bar. And that in sheer means that the Sam Maguire is heading across left knee. Heading into Tyrone for the first time ever. Cannon goes straight into the man. Free up the field for Armagh. Referee's going to talk to Peter Cannon. And Bran White, I'm quite sure, is going to get fed up, flesh and yellow cards as the flags of Tyrone fly proudly around Crook Park. At times it hasn't been pretty, but it's certainly been effective. And Armagh is still going to have to go with this long ball, Jimmy, and a massed Tyrone defence at this stage. In fact, the end of the end of. I'm oh, sorry, Aidan O'Rourke gives the ball away. Mulligan falls down onto the challenge, gives it to Lawn, but McGuigan gets it down. Goes McGuigan, tackled by Stephen McDonald. Free to Tyrone. But 30 seconds left of the three minutes that Brown White has added on. He's checked his watch. It's 12 points to Tyrone, it's nine points to Armagh. The National League champions are about to do the double all on his own as Enda McGinley faced by Francie Bellew turns away tries to get past Bellew and an angled shot McGinley didn't really mind where that ball went quick kick out Tyrone get it again Brandy it's all over it's all over Armagh have lost their crown they've lost it to their neighbours and great rivals Tyrone and all the pleas of the stewards to keep Cook Park clear just like last year have fallen on deaf ears the Tyrone supporters are out of their seats the RMA supporters are also out of their seats but it's the faces of disappointment that belong to the RMA supporters the cheers, the screams and the tears belong to the people of Tyrone a proud people who have given a lot to Gaelic football over the years and as the RMS supporters troop off their field leaving their title behind them and leaving the field to players like Peter Canavan and the rest of the Tyrone supporters who see Sam coming to the O'Neill County for the first time ever and I don't think Jimmy anybody would begrudge Peter Canavan the opportunity to collect an All-Ireland medal and as captain as well to crown his a marvellous career well done to Rome Juan Mulligan one of the heroes of the day he's being raised aloft as the Tyrone supporters as I say forget all the pleas from the crowd the stewards they're heading out on a crook park they want to see their heroes touch their heroes as Benny Tierney has a little word of consolation I think it's for Andy Mullen and quietly and stoically the Sam Maguire trophy looks down over a packed truck park in fact it's Kieran McGinney with his clubmate former clubmate Benny Tierney and all Tyrone want to be part of this historic occasion and there's a very wise move from the stewards to open the gates they've been well practised from last year and as you said Peter Tyrone football deserves this the record at underage level at minor and under 21 at vocational schools level and at colleges level has all been pointing towards this day yes they've been working towards this for years they've had their disappointment as well uh, the one point defeat by Dublin uh, in the 90s the disappointment of 86 and I suppose this this is their crowning glory 